Mary Catherine Hamm, Brian Wilson, Brian Neiman, today's newsmakers, and you, the morning majority. AM 630. 7.37 with the morning majority. Tori Clarkson for Mary Catherine Hamm this morning. Stuart Varney joins us, host of Varney & Company on the Fox Business Channel. You can see him at uh, 9.20 this morning. Good to have you on again, Stuart. Thanks, Brian. Uh, Super Committee still meeting. Uh, you know, they say there's a stalemate, and they say, hey, there may be some progress, and it's a stalemate, and there's progress. Uh, they really have to come up with something by Monday in order to have that 48-hour posting and, and before the vote. Um, there's talk of some kind of deal with 300 uh, you know, million in new taxes or new revenues or whatever. Well, what are you hearing, and where do you think this is going? All right, I'm going to go right out on a limb. Okay. I think on the Republican side, there has been a breakthrough. Because Republicans, senior Republicans, a couple of them on this committee, who are talking about raising tax revenue. Mm -hmm. Now, that's different from raising tax rates to bring in more money. This is raising revenue by lowering rates and cutting deductions. That is basic tax reform. That's what we need. If the Republicans have now moved to a position where they will accept more revenue coming into the federal treasury because of lower rates, that is a breakthrough. I think this is quite a big deal. Can new revenue ever be guaranteed uh, if you don't raise taxes? And by that I mean, okay, you can lower the rates, you can say on paper that we're going to have new revenue coming in, but that can't necessarily be guaranteed, can it? it historically, it has been true. President Kennedy did it, uh, President Reagan did it, George Bush did it. Lower rates... And in about a year's time, you get a lot more revenue because it stimulates the economy. That's not just theory. That is actuality from history. Right. Now, but they would also get rid of some deductions, I assume, in order to, to lower those rates, because I don't think the Democrats would just say, okay, yeah, we'll just lower rates. No, no, no. There's, there's got to be a deal here. So there'll be a huge political fight about mm -hmm. whose deductions get cut. But in, in the broad sense of the word, tax reform now appears to have arrived on the immediate horizon as part of a possible deal within the super committee. I think that's a breakthrough. I think it's a big deal. I'm not sure they'll get the deal, but I mean, but you are you are starting to see a little movement. And what you see on Capitol Hill right now is a lot of people sort of saying, sort of bracing and 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 laying the groundwork for this when it becomes more publicly well, known. Well, think of the backdrop here, Brian. I mean, think of the pressure here. Yesterday afternoon we crossed 15 trillion dollars mm -hmm. for our total national debt. 15 trillion and it's already gained another 4 billion since yesterday afternoon. <laughs> now, wow. that's pressure. <laughs> for, I mean, like a day, that's a By the way, how big of a deal is that? 15 trillion dollars in debt. I mean, I guess we kind of expected that was going. If you just do the math, we know that it's going up all the time, but how how significant is 15 trillion? Well, it, the, the significance is the interest that you've got to pay to have that kind of debt. This year, we're going to spend $454 billion just on interest payments. That's roughly $9 billion a week, some of it going overseas. And by the way, within the next 11 months, before Election Day next year, we will hit $16 trillion with another jump in the amount of interest. It'll be a half trillion dollars in interest by this time next year. Now, that, that, that's where, which has political impact, it has economic impact, it has market impact. You can't ignore this. I, it's just the numbers are beyond comprehension. <laughs> they really me. are. So I have to bring it down to something that I really care about, Stuart, because it's all about me. So. Give us the CNN headlines version of Europe and what's going on, and most importantly, is it time to buy vacation proper, property in Italy? Well, you can't ask him to do anything that's related to CNN. That's not allowed. <laughs> you can ask. <laughs> it will not produce. Well, give us the Fox um, Business Channel headlines on it. There you go. <laughs> yes, there'll be emails about this. Yeah. Um, okay, headlines from Europe. They're spiraling down. They're having increasing trouble borrowing the money that they desperately need. Therefore, I think the crunch is almost upon us. I think the Europeans are about to start printing money big time. And do you want to buy property in Italy? Well, um, if the euro, if the euro disintegrates, yes, because prices will be absolutely dirt cheap. Go for your life, Mary Catherine. Uh, I, uh, okay, here, here's my question, if I could, and it has to do with whether or not they can actually salvage that mess. I mean, is there a chance that this will get get stabilized 
for good? Or are we just going to be here in this country constantly rocking back and forth between 12-5 and 11-5, and we don't know, one day it looks like they've got it solved, and the next day it looks like they don't? I mean, are, are, is there ever any chance that they will actually get this thing fixed on a permanent way? In my opinion, no. Well, that's sort of what I'm beginning to wonder. No, I, I don't see what that permanent solution could be unless it is the breakup of the euro and a sudden huge crash. Well, how should that? How should we that take that information and use it to our advantage as we look to try to make reasonable investments with our money? In the short term, they'll muddle through by printing money, and that will avoid the crisis. They'll kick it down the road for another few weeks, maybe even another few months, but they're going to print money. That means they're going to inflate. That means gold should be a good investment. That would be my comment. Well, thank you very much. Uh, that's news I can use. Uh, by the, it's in the backyard, Brian. Uh, by the way, uh, oil up to $100 a barrel again. Uh, what's the reasoning behind that? Well, there was a technical reason. There's some kind of pipeline shift yesterday, uh, changing from one pipeline to another, blocking one up. That was a technical surge yesterday. But I note that this morning, we've only come, we're still at $100 a barrel. Now, looking forward, that means that you're going to establish a new normal for gasoline prices. Right. Somewhere north of three fifty a gallon. Now that, that's not good news no. for, in a presidential election year because it would be the highest price gas ever in an election year, and about two bucks, roughly a dollar fifty higher than where it was when the President Obama came in. And that's not good political news. All right, Stuart. Good to have you on. As always, we appreciate it. Okay, guys. Thanks.